fix your lens. Nine out of ten, got you playing pretend. Nine out of ten, here we go again. The hell y'all show this late for? Y'all know what time it is? Just come in. Yeah, man, so welcome to the party. Welcome to the party. Welcome to the King's Castle. Just in case some of y'all didn't see this, I got a chance to whoop Batman's ass a couple of weeks ago. It's on now. Let's go. It's no big deal though, I'm just a punter, you know? So, but since y'all here, we might as well just talk about punts since that's the only thing that matters in the world. So, did you know that punt starts with a P and punter starts with a P and ends with the R? But that doesn't matter right now because we're talking about the drop. Today is about the drop. Now, I decided to kind of give a couple of tips away for a couple of people. I know, um, no, why not? Why not help find a way to better the world? And the way to better the world is to help punters and kickers just be better. But I'm just a punter because, yeah. Now that y'all know what we're gonna talk about today, I got a quick fun fact for y'all before we dive right into this subject. The most important part of punting, the drop. The most important part of kicking a ball, because if you can't drop the ball correctly, there's no point even kicking. You might as well play a different position. So one of the main things about the drop is all about how you hold the ball. So, hello, my name is Mark Quick. I don't think we met yet. What's, what's your name? Well, if you pay close attention, let's stumble that again. My name's Mark Quick. What's your name? So, you keep your hand here, which is called the handshake drop. The handshake drop is very important. This is usually how I put the ball when I'm playing in the game. So, I put the ball in my hand, and I kind of like focus on my fingertips. Making sure the fingertips are the only things touching the football. And you kind of have a little air. Is that right here for me very quick? Now I got a little air right there, a little air pocket right there, where you kind of stick, slide something through. Kind of like when that referee slipped the index card between that yard marker and that football that day when we played the Cowboys on Sunday night or Monday night football. I don't remember which one, but it was one of those days. Dead vertical. Look at this. Can he put can he put a card in between it? Look at you. <laughs> he can barely contain himself. You want to make sure you have a little bit of gap right there because when you drop the ball, you want to make sure there's even amounts of pressure on the football when you drop it. Because when you drop it, you want it to fall the same way as you're holding it. It don't matter because I'm a punter! When we're talking about drops, we're not talking about these drops. Where you at? Oh, no! We're talking about these kind of drops. You got the whole the drop from on top. How some people do it, and you also got the pizza. But it works for some people, so whatever. Hey, Mr. Raquet, Mr. Raquet, um, uh, can, you, can you tell us more about the, the drop? Oh, glad you asked. So, yeah, you want to make sure you got the ball gripping, or the football gripping your hands perfectly to where it's comfortable for you because we're all different. We're not the same, you know? Not the same. You don't want it touching the palm of your hands. Like, it might get windy, you might get too excited, start walking too fast, and the back of the ball will push along your hand and then turn and drop it in. But, I mean, you want to focus on doing that. You, even if you hold the ball on the side or at the top, you want to make sure you drop it with even amounts of pressure. So, everybody's not expected to do the same exact thing because we're all different. Like, you can just do this all day. Like, it should be the same all the time. Like, when you drop it, it should fall the same way all the way down. You also want to make sure you got a, a good extension with your arm. You don't want it to be over exaggerated, like straight. You kind of want a, a slight bend, but you kind of want to have it here and make sure it's solid. You might have a nice extension with it and just focus on just dropping it. And with dropping the ball, you can drop it anywhere. Like, you can go to the store, you can go to the club, you can go anywhere. I take pride in it. Yeah. You feel me? So I make sure I try to protect every little thing that has anything to do with putting, period. One thing that my coach used to get on to me about, like my first, I think it was my first year with the Raiders in 2012, he'd get on to me about like kicking so much. And the cool thing about it was, 
I didn't really have to kick that much to get better. It was all about the technical stuff. So one of the main things I focused on was my drop. The drop is the most important thing. Really stressed to me. Shout out to Coach Hoffman, man. I miss him. He's one of the best kicking coaches I've ever had. I would just walk around the facility, walk around the club, walk around the store, like doing everything, just dropping everything. Cereal, macaroni and cheese noodles, spaghetti noodles. learn today people that's what's up so we learned about drops drops here drops there but what y'all should make sure y'all know about is the fact that everybody's different and what works for you works for you and that's the main thing and everybody has a different way different style of doing just make sure whatever you do just focus on your drops because that's the purpose of this video was to focus on drops so just make sure you stay tuned because I got more to drop very soon focus on keep your arm kind of extended somewhat Keeping it extended all the way out, but you got everything in alignment. So everything's in alignment, and I'm on the line right now. So you know what I'm saying? Like it all works. It's all coordinated. Coordinated. If I drop the ball like this, it should fall the whole way down, just like this, no matter what. So if I drop the ball like this, I don't know what I'm gonna catch. Hey, so Keisha, what did you learn about the drops? Just drop the call. Oh, okay. So, uh, so something that you know, Mr. King has taught me. It's a little bit about drops. It's custom. No top, bottom. We'll do this. Didn't go that far, but I'm not a pro. Talk to my kid about that. I just need my space. space. Let it sink in Used to hoop in your converse so comfortably Knew one day I'd be good and you'd come for me Didn't know it would make me this hungry Looking at your judgment and everyone's wondering Ride the heat, the windy city, did you see the damn coat? Saw you in the hallway, you say young and put on a show Didn't know that's the cold print you're about to get rolled Even Adam Silver told me I deserve the gold Didn't get the trophy, but I got something to hold Jeez, Forgive me, bro, I won't sell my soul. Big chillin', paint me way too late. So you're getting this arm in play literally as all of your momentum. So you're using this to get everything forward rather than using even this arm or any of your core or everything that is pretty much huge to Kicking. You're using all leg and keeping everything back. Literally back. You're back, you're keeping back. Even your shoulder you could see fully behind fully behind you fully keeping me back. Um I would say the same probably even with your left pelvis here. It looks like left glutes and you literally only have your leg going with power wise. Yeah. Just make those pretty much perfectly if you want to use this kickoff system. Or you're going to have to shorten it, uh, I believe. Um, 
moving on to, to that lunge. <clears throat> we'll go back here and you'll see this step. Okay, so we're going to put this much in between the step. Let's see this one. And you gotta have a good positioning. That's a, a good position. You gotta have a good position. You have to have great positioning to literally make sure you do not lunge. Make sure you do not you misplace. Kick fully. So you have yours around, not too wild, not too bad. Not gonna say much about it. I already said uh, stuff about that uh, that balance arm. Um, you can use your right arm for a little bit more balance than you do. As you can see, you lose your balance right here, and that's when you're leaning on your left side. Um, and I mean, you can just you can just do the math on whether you'd rather be kicking, leaning this uh, with all your weight here. As you can see, your pinky go, your pinky toe goes down first. It's a it's a clear sign that you're on your uh, you're on your left. You're on your outside way a little bit uh, too much. Um, so it's like, would you rather hit the ball like that, or would you rather hit the ball? like this with your full with your full momentum not just this little bit right here with your full momentum and you're just you and you just have to trust yourself when you go through with that kick and man you're gonna uh, improve a ton 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 um if you can make that transition and i can even help you if you do join i kick training so just as this is just a quick uh, sample sesh, we're gonna move forward. Um, let's see what your ball movement is. You hit a little bit low, so it's a duck a little bit, um, not up and down. You just go. a quick shout out to the sponsor, Liquid IV. I will have more in soon, guys, for samples and all that good stuff. Stay tuned getting a code soon even and let's go liquid iv get hydrated one stick multiply your hydration Nothing fake. All it takes is one stick. Carry that back heel about here, real deep, real deep. I want it real deep. So as you can see, you fly out right here. You get a little um, unadjusted or off balance here, landing on the side of your foot, which you're relying on all your weight. You're putting right here. But you are moving it all forward pretty well. Not too much of a crunch. Kept uh, that part of the chest up. Um, th this arm uh, could be a little lower and more like a balance arm, more like this one as you have. Um, but um, this 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 looks pretty good right here. So as you can see, how much you had to twist your body and do all of this just because of that. Uh, that uh, long, uh, pretty much, as you could say, doesn't fit in with the rest of the group step. Didn't know where for it, but yeah. As you can see, that's what you, you're having to make up with it with your athletic ability, which you have a lot of, and you really are great at uh, hitting the ball and making contact and uh, all that good stuff. So, 
you're able to make up for it and, and hit field goals, but. We've seen in countries like Taiwan and South Korea, uh, and spreading also into more Western countries, um, and of course in the United States where it has begun as well, the tracking and monitoring of the movements of the whole of the human population through the movements of our phones. And it is, I think, uh, something that should raise cause for concern because when we talk about the applications, and I'm, I'm sure we will, they're, they're saying they're using it for contact tracing. This person gets sick, uh, where did they go? Who may they have come in contact with precisely so they can produce these kind of text messages that you describe? On its face, it seems like it might be a good idea. Uh, there is, of course, a, a natural presumed benefit here. And yet, uh, this level of contact tracing, this, this method of contact tracing, uh, does not really work on a pandemic scale. You know, we're declaring, you know, various states of emergencies here and there, but these have sweeping powers. What is being built is the architecture of oppression. So when we look at South Korea, when we look at China, when we look at, you know, Taiwan, Singapore, countries like this, now America, there's all of this data being collected. How are the governments, so when in, 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 in South Korea, I get a text saying, oh, you met Joe Blow, he might be infected, you should, you know, sequester yourself for 14 days. How are they getting that data? <laughs> That's a good question. I mean, that's really the one that should make everyone uh, just look at their phone and, you know, sort of raise an eyebrow. Um, there are a number of ways that you can track the location of someone through their phone. Uh, there are the cell phone towers themselves, but there's also uh, the wireless network that you're connected to. And then what other wireless networks are around you that you're not connected to? This you can think of as what wireless networks your phone can hear. And so these wireless network identifiers are then collected and they're mapped out against GPS. And then they know if you can see mom's Wi-Fi and neighbor Ted's Wi-Fi and the library Wi-Fi all at the same time, you have to be within range of these things. It becomes a proxy for location. Now that we know uh, all of our phones can and are being tracked at all times just by being turned on, um, the phone companies have it at a bare minimum. Facebook probably has it, Google probably has it, Apple probably has it, uh, and many, many other companies you've never even heard of that run ad networks. What this really means in uh, a France or a, a United States is they go, well, look, we're aware of privacy concerns, so what we're gonna do is we're going to um, depersonalize this information. We're going to anonymize it, and we're not gonna look at individuals. We're gonna look at the flows of uh, movement of these phones, right? We're not looking at one phone, we're looking at the aggregate movements of phones. Nine out of 10, I'ma keep his end. Nine out of 10, can you please fix your lens? Nine out of